oxygen means more energy means more adventure pure oxygen natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy immunity and performance the next generation of hydration pure oxygen nature's ultimate water Hi and welcome to the Barcast the Podcast. I believe this is episode number seven of season three. We're going to keep pumping them out to you. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. Big up to the sponsors. I'm going to let George do that. Yeah, this week we uh, have Cure Oxygen Water. So yeah. Cure is a title sponsor for the Barcast now. So it's the Barcast brought to you by Cure Oxygen Water. Thank you to SMJ Beverages. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the support this season. Yeah, man. So we got Cura Oxygen Water. They're sponsor of Coast to Coast as well. Correct. They're sponsor Coast to Coast. We have uh, Automotive Art as well. Yeah. Um, we have PD Light from um, Pharmacy Sales. Yeah. And we also have, of course, Simpson Motors, always supporting us through issues with vehicles. All right. So welcome back to George. He's been a stranger to the podcast yeah, uh, yeah. for a couple of weeks. We had Tom Penny. We had you now. Well, have you been up to George, man? Well, I've been working with World Obstacle. We're trying to see if I can... Um, spread obstacle racing throughout the Caribbean. So we have some interest now in Cayman. We have some interest mm-hmm. in Martinique and some in Guadeloupe. So if nothing else, we should have more athletes from those territories coming to Barbados for the Caribbean championships. Um, but yeah, they're trying to get some events off as well. Um, some local events in the French Caribbean as well as the Cayman, like we said before. So we're trying to bring everybody together on the, the federation for the Caribbean Obstacle Racing Federation. Yes. Um, and I'm going to, I really plan to dethrone Ian Adamson as president of World Obstacle. <laughs> no, he doesn't pay anything, so I'm not interested. Right, right, right. You're like, <laughs> just to like, be the guy in the Caribbean and we spread World Obstacle or Obstacle Racing through the Caribbean. Are they going to look to Barbados? Who are going to be the ones that have started doing it almost first? Well, Jamaica's had a race for a while. They've had something called the Guardsman Games. Right. But the way it was structured, it was really structured more for local athletes because you had a qualifying that was like in June and then the finals would be in like mid July. Right. So it wasn't very tourist friendly and it wasn't really structured like a typical obstacle racing event. They had obstacles, but then they had kind of more functional training, they had gym based kind of weightlifting events. So mm-hmm. now they're starting to make it more more like a typical obstacle racing event. Right. And in fact, Jamaica is hosting the World Obstacle Commonwealth Championships this year. Uh, and I think Jamaica is also hosting a Spartan Games this year as well. Well, they got a Spartan Games in Jamaica. Spartan Race, not Spartan Games. Yeah, Race, yeah, sorry. yeah, absolutely. So yeah, Jamaica is they definitely the there. Game. Well, they're second. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully we can get some of our local uh, guys up to Jamaica at least for, the, for a race or two there. Yes, the, the only thing I will say, well, yeah, I think the only thing I'll say is that we have the World Championships, OCR World Championships in September. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have six athletes qualified for that, and it's our intention to try and raise enough money to take a team to that. September, you said? September 22nd to 25th in Stratton in Vermont. So if you're out there and you want to come along and see uh, an obstacle race, you want to support the athletes, and you can actually register and take part in the Open Wave events as well. Um, mm-hmm. If you want to run in the 3K Championship event, you have to qualify. So we have three male and three female athletes from BAR last year that qualified. But you can register and, and pay and sign up for age group or open wave and, and go and race the course as well. Well, okay, again, it's good. We want to hear more about that as we grow. We go closer to that in September. You know, we've got a lot of um, events right. on the bar calendar coming up. So uh-huh. as we get closer, we can continue to remind us, you know, September is coming up. And- you want to get on board with this thing? Yeah, man, for sure. I mean, well, you know, make sure you, you get your passports and your visas because now here is a super long wait for passports and visas. Mm-hmm. Um, so get them early uh, and keep your eye on the page. We're going to keep everybody informed. We'll mail out. Uh, talking to the Ministry of Sport, talking to the Ministry of Tourism to make sure that we have everything in place to support the athletes on this. So with this um, trend of an increase and in interest in obstacle racing throughout the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. So we're seeing the big news coming out today that they're actually looking to put obstacle racing and obstacle race into yeah. the pentathlon or something like that. There, so. Yeah, yeah, the modern pentathlon. And, and obstacle racing and, and pentathlon have been close friends for a while. Mm. A lot of times when, when local federations are trying to get started, because obstacle racing wasn't an Olympic event, it would be hard to get support from your national organizing committee. And so very often obstacle coursing went under the umbrella of multi-sports, which would be, in most cases, modern pentathlon. 
So modern pentathlon would incorporate the obstacle racing athletes and that would allow them to get support from their Olympic associations. And, and so there was already, you know, kind of a friendship there, and a, a relationship, alliance, a relationship correct, yeah. between obstacle racing and, and modern pentathlon. What is modern pentathlon anyway, though? Let me start there. Right. Well, it's probably not that modern, actually. So <laughs> <laughs> let me think about the, the disciplines involved. So there's fencing. There's, right. <laughs> exactly. Right. So right, we should call it old pentathlon or something. Right. Ancient pentathlon. Yeah. So there's, there's fencing, there's swimming, there's shooting, right. um, there's running. And previously, there was horseback riding. Definitely and, and, not that modern. <laughs> yeah, no, so I think that horseback riding has been coming under some scrutiny for, for quite a few years now, especially with you know some animals being injured or even dying on courses. Right. Um, so the animal rights activists and, of course, just people who have a humane approach to animal rights have been calling for horseback riding to be taken out of the sport for a while anyway. Yeah. Uh, and, and also, I think... You know, the move is for the Olympic Games as a whole to try and attract a younger audience, largely because of television. And um, nobody's watching modern pentathlon. I mean, have you ever watched a modern pentathlon in the Olympics? I, I, I don't think so. Do you, it's exactly. You even know what it is, right? I wasn't even sure what it was. That is true. Exactly. Because, and as you say, it's modern sport. But it does almost like they got one that like, managed to be skiing and then they managed to stop the shoot. Right. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's been the Olympic Olympics. Correct. And... Yeah, I just be confused as to how you win this. Right. It's going to shoot everybody, of course. <laughs> and get you for this line. And then you win. <laughs> well, we'll get you for this line of life. Exactly. So, yeah. So, I think that's by athlete. I know it, Ian. But, yeah. yeah. So, my name is be fit. Don't get me wrong. Those, those guys are fit. But as far as attracting that kind of younger, more trendy television audience, it hasn't been working. So, uh, incorporating, incorporating obstacle racing now as mm -hmm. part of modern pentathlon in LA 2028 as a demonstration sport, as a test event, basically. And it will be two courses. One will be your typical ninja course, and the other one will be a long course event. Right, because as you think now with um, obstacle racing, now is to get the sport almost a kind of standard days because you can buy obstacles at one event, right. they will not buy at another event. So they, I guess like monkey bars and rope and everything are going to be standard almost every obstacle racing event. But then you got these... Special obstacles you can buy one bit and you end up on the um monkey bars, right? Like the monkey, and the sandy tail, or traverse bar, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so. I think, I think World Obstacle has some standardized courses, right? So, there's a standardized course for the 100 meters, there's oh. a standardized course for the 400 meters, uh, and and so on. Those are the standardized ones, and they normally take place on a track. Mm -hmm. So, they send you a, a setup for how many obstacles should be included in the 100 meter race how they should be spread out, and they do the same thing for the 400 as well. So there's well, already... Is they, if you go to say, you, you run hurdles in my business and it's more height, right. you're going to say this. Exactly. Right. And they may go up a different height. So there's already some standards. Some standard right, right, yeah. But of course, you know, if you start to look at things like a 5K race or a 3K race, as long as the terrain is slightly different, it's a completely different race. Yeah. So that's what they're moving towards. Because right? more the cross country, then that's why you see cross country. You don't have no world for your kids cross country record or anything. Right. Exactly, it's a course record, but it's not a world record. Right. So if, if I had to guess, and obviously we're still six years away from just the test event, I would say that the shorter course races are the ones that are more likely to to stay in, even though traditionally, you know. Modern pentathlon has been more kind of endurance based events. Mm -hmm. But if you have a, a race with a 5K or 10K run, you don't need another 5K or 10K obstacle race. You can have a shorter course, a little more intense, maybe 400 meters, but standardized so that it travels from LA to France to Paris to Tokyo to wherever. It's always going to be the same event. Right. I, I, I think that, that makes sense. As well. mm -hmm. Unless, of course, you want to put beers in one of the runs. <laughs> That's a bit. Bears, you mean like the four legged animal? Yeah, they know. Oh, the the chase, yeah. <laughs> runners. Well, we get to see for this. It's about the back of the, the human race and animal race. Right, 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 right. That would make sense. <laughs> for years, I've been violating an hour or so. So we can just put some bears or tigers on the course <laughs> and anywhere I live with. Where we live with. Okay, so that's good news, though. Hopefully, it would mean that obstacle racing is about to explode even more so on the on the global stage and know that it has more eyes on it. Hopefully that way it will attract more eyes. And also the fact that they are using it to kind of bring back viewership means that there is an interest that people recognize out there for world for, in the world for obstacle racing. Yeah, I mean don't forget that ninja is a form of obstacle. Huh? 
and, mm. and ninjas on a prime time on network television. So <coughs> on all the time, uh, uh, exactly <laughs> right. And then we run the run, run, run constantly. So there's yeah. already an audience for for ninja. Yeah. And I think many people right now in their mind separate ninja from obstacle racing. But one is just a short course obstacle race, and one is a long course obstacle race. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are very different events in the way like a 100 meter sprint is different to a marathon or a 10K. Um, so you're not going to generally find the same athletes in doing doing both events. You know, ninja is just, just so obstacle intense. Exactly. Unless you're Mo Farah, for example. <laughs> but, but, but for most people, you know, you're going to choose one or the other. Yeah. But they all fall under, this, fall under the same umbrella of obstacle racing. So, um, yeah, now is the time, I think, to, to use Ninja to drive people towards modern pentathlon as a test event. If they get good viewership, then maybe, you know, obstacle racing becomes a permanent fixture on the Olympic calendar. Ninja is so, they're packaged so well and so mm -hmm. bright. You know, a lot of bright colors and everything. Like you, you know when you're watching an, an mm -hmm. American Ninja Warrior. I think they, they borrow a lot of their aesthetics from the Japanese, Chinese kind of like red bright colors, I think, which don't really necessarily run so sweet a lot with the parallel, a lot with the Olympic aesthetic. Right. But it, it would be interesting though, I know that you've mentioned Ninja, it, it makes a lot more sense still to me for obstacle racing in the modern pentathlon, but more structured for sure. Yeah, I, I think that the Olympic Association has to move away from what they've done historically as well, right? If you want young viewers, if you want the guys who are watching the X Games, you want guys who are watching NBA basketball playoffs and NFL, you have to make it exciting. You have to make it interesting for young viewership. Um, so you got to get rid of some of the old things. and you know, make it, you actually make it modern. You, got, you <laughs> actually have to make that bit pentathlon modern for it. <laughs> You can actually call it modern pet after I tell you, you can believe you. Really <laughs> Faces, <laughs> a horse, my rating, all that nonsense. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that, that's good news, though. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, when I, when I saw that, I said, I said, I put something on the page and I tagged a few people. And, and, and my man Darren came back and told me that all the, all the people that I tagged get me old by the time that I'm <laughs> around, right? I'm like, not really. I mean, you know. Yeah, we shall be, but. Maybe, I mean, Jade will still be very much in her prime as a, a, a in Olympic athlete. Jade is, what, 20 now? Let's say... She's not young. She, she, I had Jade at 24. 24. That's me trying to be young. No, I'm trying to I, keep the age But even if, even if she's 30, even if she's she 32, 30, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's kind of prime, prime yeah. age for an endurance athlete. Yeah. Um, the others might be a little long in the teeth by then, but, you know. Well, the, the, and the thing is, um, we're looking for it to be a, a separate sport completely. Right. As opposed to being a part because you know you got to teach Jade fencing. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, that's true. We, people all of a sudden I see Amherst over here fencing. <laughs> Amherst over fencing. And I say, well, let me let me learn how to ride this horse to kiss him. Right. So, yeah. yeah. I only I just I only just thought about that, but you know Darren works the horses, so he ain't a horse riding and be out. I try to think who can, who of the bar athletes I think now we can train to. A modern pentathlon. Who do you think uh, actually actually for athletes they ever shoot somebody? <laughs> I, I know, like a lot of don't, times. Don't call it him. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. No, no. It's probably one of the girls, though. It's, it's <laughs> like, but you know, a lot of times what's happened is that girls who have, like, uncles or fathers who shoot, they teach them to shoot from right, an early, from age, early right? age. So there's some girls out there just walk around quiet saying, you can't be there. <laughs> can't <laughs> me see what happened. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, there's a few of them out there for sure. Yeah, so you got to learn that you got to learn to... Of, as well as get over the obstacles, guys, learn, mm -hmm. learn to fence and shoot now. Uh, right, hopefully, yeah. it'll be an Olympian. <laughs> right. You know, Rih Rihanna rides. Rihanna yeah. rides. She runs. So she can do a little obstacle course. Yeah. It would just be the fencing and the shooting. Um, and she's super uncoordinated when it comes to these types of things. So I know <laughs> she can learn to fence. She might jiggle she want to. <laughs> she might end up jiggle she want to. So keep, 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 <laughs> keep that, keep that saber for real, Rihanna. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I, it'll be it'll, it'll be good, but I don't know. I don't know. I can't think of anybody that can shoot and stop. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. But you know, there is a modern pentathlon association in Barbados. Oh, there is. I, I think it's not very well subscribed. There's maybe two or three athletes on the island. Because I know when we were trying to establish um, a federation, we oh. tried to go under them, but then we realized that they were competing, but they had never actually formally um, made the association. Whoa. So that's why we went ahead and we did our own thing with Janelle, who was here last week as a guest. <clears throat> and so we've got our own, you know, we've got our own constitution, we've got our own bylaws, and we're, like Janelle said, moving towards a non-profit um, association. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so 
That would be good, though. Yes. She also mentioned uh, in her podcast that she's been doing a lot of running. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm talking a bit about Ron Margulis. She said that she's going to be doing Ron Margulis. And mm-hmm. Ron Margulis is back. Ron Margulis is back. And I know, like, I, when it, when I first saw the email, I, I actually started to draft the email for all the bar mailing lists, right? Right. And, and the email is basically Ron Barbados is back. And bar is the weekend before Ron Barbados. You don't have to choose. Yeah. You train for bar, and your that bar fitness will get you through one bar beta, unless, unless you're doing marathon or something. We should do a few more longer runs, but bar training will get you through almost any run bar beta event. Even mm-hmm. from the carries, your legs are going to get stronger. You know, you're going to find your cardiovascular improving in a way that it it can't with just running. So yeah, I think that come out. In fact, don't bother training for run bar beta. That's what I was actually thinking. Train for bar, and then turn up the next weekend and beat everybody. It probably um, only like because let me be frank, like, none of you have in the medals that were more right? Yeah, right? So yeah. unless you are a hardcore runner, right? Where, where you're looking to be on the podium or mm-hmm. something like that, I do believe maybe that, Carly, like, maybe Carly, yeah, somebody like yeah, Carly, yeah, yeah. Um, a few more of the other people like, that are actually they hard runners. And mm-hmm. I even in Chicago, Kamal, I feel like Kamal could come and train for bar, right. and he. 5k or 10k time will be the same. I mean, 80 so, percent of bar training is running. Right, anyway, exactly. Right? So, yeah. so unless you are really a speci- really a specific like Josh, mm. even that doesn't do the obstacle race. That is that right. he's a sort of person that I don't know if it would make sense for him to train bar for run bar business. But anybody else, yeah, from me back down, right. train bar and then they're not gonna do run bar business and beat the people that they train in for the road all the time. I wonder if I should reach out to, to Zari. And see mm. if we can do like a, a joint medal, a joint finisher medal for everybody mm. who finishes both events or who podiums both events or top 10 both. Something that will encourage people to do both events. Because make it I think a challenge. Of, yeah, make it being that closely, close together. <clears throat> we can combine forces somewhat. I mean, if you're coming down to Barbados, if you're listening to this, I saw on the podcast um, stats that we had a person listening from the UK. One person. <laughs> <laughs> but we're growing, we're growing. So a person's uh, a major. <laughs> I don't know. I know who I think it is. I think it's Jade Skilling. So Jade Skilling is uh-huh. this um, CrossFit High Rocks um, obstacle racing athlete. Uh, she comes to Barbados frequently, and we'd actually started a conversation with her last year about coming to the event last year and maybe even doing some coaching and bringing some of her athletes because she's uh-huh. a coach. So I think that would be her. Um, she's actually coming here in June, so we'll have her on the podcast. Oh, nice. Um, so I think she 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 should hear for here for coast to coast. And she's looking for a team. So if there's a team out there looking for one very fit female to join him, um, she might be up for it. And anybody looking for a male, not myself, but Morris told me to reach out. Right. And then anybody know that anybody looking for a man right. for their team, mm-hmm. I'll let them know. And if, you know, you obviously if you're not looking for anybody very good, you can pick Morris. It's <laughs> not true. It's not true. He's a, he's a good guy. He's a good, strong lad. All right. Uh, Really like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so so she uh will probably be here in June. Mm-hmm. Uh she she's gonna be doing course to course instead. Yeah, good. yeah, she's she's been asking about it. So I think she'll be good. She the, the unique thing about her, the reason I reached out to her is that she lives in the UK most of the time. Mm-hmm. She competes in Europe a lot, and then she does online coaches for athletes in Mexico and the United States. Mm-hmm. And actually, she was thinking about being stationed in Barbados so that she could just jump to the States, jump to Mexico, jump to Costa Rica to do home. events yeah. correct, and come back. So she normally spends quite a bit of time here in the winter months, right. uh, but she's coming June for a little bit, and I don't know if she's coming back again. Well, she's definitely be coming back for bar, but I'm not sure for how long. She, oh, she could probably do the same thing <clears throat> you're talking about, do the bar and run Barbados. Maybe. I've never seen her doing like individual straight distance events on her page. It's always high rocks or obstacle mm-hmm. race or something, but... I don't see why she can't just get a run of 10k. It should be. I mean, uh, the only thing that will keep keep her about would be the fact that she will go out and make that, you know, I may not be competitive. I may right. not be winning, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. you just got to put yourself in that mindset for, for that. But I think that Look at her page, was, though. Look at her page. Last weekend, she won the Spartan event. She did, so. She's yeah, definitely, you know, she, 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 she would be good, man. Yeah. Yeah, you could train, train on this side, train for bar. Mm-hmm. And, um, I definitely believe if you could do bar, especially if you could do day two, mm-hmm. uh, which is like nine point something k, lots of uphill, right. um, carries, climbs, right. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you could definitely do the ten k, which is going to be relatively flat. Yes, uh, new venue, right? Yeah, it's mm-hmm. on the east coast. Mm-hmm. For I wonder where where East Tahan, where though? 
So from the of course from the roots that I've seen, it's all kind of like in the cattle wash area. Mm. Um, so there are loops. And I think like the half marathon, the, 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 the 10K loop is two loops and the 5K loop and so on. And then the 10K loop, I think, goes further. So if we start by like in the Bashima area, one might get to the bottom of Cherry Three Hill. Cherry Three? Uh, and oh, they're flat one, off, Yeah, right? and one, actually some of them goes like slightly yeah. off the road, like into the trail a little bit. Mm. Um, and he had done, he'd done an email recently. So if, you, if you're on the mailing list for Run Barbados, just have a look and see. And um, get that information. Bar, December 3rd and 4th. Run Barbados, December 11th. You know, 10th and 11th. 10th and 11th, yeah. Um, the good thing about that there, so uh, the, 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 the amount of training that you're going to see happening on that side of the island, right. close to that yeah, time yeah, yeah, year, yeah. that's going to be actually good to watch, man. Uh, and I think it's going to be good to like, keep a lot of the runners more on that side of the island. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have to be battling with that much traffic. You know, people are going to be coming out and running the roads and things. So hopefully, the people that are driving on the East Coast, because they've got a lot of light out there. Right. That's uh, the thing. Are cognizant. That's the other thing, too. So I would say <clears throat> get on that side and train as specifically as you can on that route. But mm -hmm. remember, there are no sidewalks to jump upon. Mm -hmm. uh, so make sure you're very visible. Make sure you have on something reflective. Uh, one ugly um, workman vest that people wear. Yeah. Let me talk about it. Somebody's got somebody in the running apparel <laughs> community. Yeah, needs to do a better reflective vest. Something that is form fitting, but is just made out of material that reflects. Right. So that you don't go wear them big ugly things that's billowing the breeze like I, the sail. You, those are the ones that they reflect the safety jackets. Safety jackets, yeah. They, they, they made some too, though, that are just the straps. Just the straps. I, I have yeah. one of those, but then the elastic, it does all elastic, and because it's all elastic, it doesn't have to stretch out. But yeah. I think I had seen that there was some company making actual reflective running vests. Right. But, like but for 85 pounds <laughs> <was like, laughs> right. per vest. So, yeah. Kelly yeah. actually had come out to do one of our night runs, mm -hmm. and she had on like, a full. Reflect the jacket that it looked as right. though, not that when uh, they rescue somebody and they got hypothermia, right, and they right, 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 right. <laughs> right. 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 foil, right, 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 the original bar t-shirt, the one that says, life is an obstacle course, life is tough, obstacles are around, stay the course. I try to remember what it looked like. Blue one with the words on the front. Mm -hmm. So it says, life is tough. Obstacles all around, stay the course, right? Uh -huh. And then it has life is and obstacle, course. Those words are reflective. So if you're, so if you're out running and the car hits you from the front, you will see life is an obstacle course. <laughs> course. Hopefully you will still got life after that. After, car. after the car runs. <laughs> <after laughs> <after that. laughs> Look at that place to place your address. <laughs> yeah, strange <laughs> things will happen. Yeah, so yeah, that would be funny. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, so... Same thing is going to apply for coast to coast, right? Mm. If you're coming out, it's going to be 4.30 in the morning. Now the sun's rising at like 5 o'clock, but we're still going to have a little bit of time out there. Really, really yeah, we're going to have a little mm -hmm. bit of time out there before we have proper sunlight. So still wear something reflective, even if it's just the bands or the ankle, ankle straps or the wrist straps, uh, a headlamp. And we do have support vehicles on the road, so when things get heavy or uncomfortable, take them off, throw them in the back of your trucks, and we'll bring them back up from a um, boatyard. Um, the professional tip is the three dollar store. Mm. You get any bicycle lights. This right. is the three dollars each. I come in red, green, blue, uh, white. Yeah, you can use those as well. Yeah. You don't want to bet on there for any right. either, So hopefully. So yeah, what I was thinking about to know that we continue to mention course to course is that that is an event we were mentioning in the that is in, in the UK mm -hmm. that I feel could be easily packaged to especially know that everybody's leaving at the same time. You're feeling you can get some good footage from coast to coast. Are you looking to film it or anything like that? Or again? Yeah, well, definitely. We definitely need to film it. And you see, I've been amassing a few cameras over the last little while. Every time we come, it's every time we come, a podcast. We shoot a podcast with 20 cameras. <laughs> and then we go from the top. You got a new GoPro or something. <laughs> But no, we are, we're going to definitely, um, thanks again to the sponsors who've put some funds behind this event. We're definitely going to have some cameramen on the, on, and some videographers on the course. Yeah. Because I think all this content as well helps to drive the whole bar story leading down to December. But into 2023, as we grow more and more as a tourism event, we want to be able to put stuff on the BTMI website. We want to be able to put stuff on all the sponsors' websites that shows people what the bar experience is about. 
and encourages them to come to Barbados to take part in these events. Really, truly, what George is really doing is that's a massive footage for the not the Netflix documentary. Right, right, right. <laughs> that's a real master plan. That's the big set of money off of a Netflix documentary right. in twenty years. Of people like, remember this is where Mark started. You see the whole Kanye do he video the other day where people was like, "Oh yeah, all this footage right. from when he was getting the studio." Right, I was like, "Yeah, right, boy, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. George doing man." This documentary. So, so all the content on Netflix. Netflix documentary about a race director who who <laughs> absconded with two million dollars. <laughs> I left people at the finish like at the start like they <laughs> erased the start. Right, right. <laughs> uh, you see, fiction, <laughs> complete fiction, because there'll never be two million dollars generated through bar. But you know, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> Oh, right, camera. Right, 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 right. You edit that part. When that face actually does kind of right, right. I look at him here. Right. This is George Griffith. He's the blast. <laughs> yeah. right, so I, I, I would have assumed the alias by then. He's living somewhere in, in, in Indonesia. Yeah, in Indonesia, they also know the old guys know where to go up for him. Right. Uh, so, of course, the course is what date again? June 26th. June 26th. Uh, 4 30 a.m. And it's funny because we put up a little, a little reel the other day with the um, sim that we put together for the event. And um, that's actually to generate a little bit of interest. So we're training every Saturday morning. By the time this podcast comes out, we probably would have missed Saturday day. What's today? Today's the... Today's the event. Right. So we missed, we missed the 14th, but we're going all the way through. Yeah. So DM the page on Instagram bar on the score race. <clears throat> Most of you have my cell phone number. It's a cell phone number on the page as well. We do have limited spaces in these workouts. Because the workouts is a lot of calories, etc. So for everybody that comes in long that has to come out. Well I some some like... yeah exactly some some implement that needs to come out. And I I just got gap in the morning and put all of them. Right. So I don't want to take one extra bag or right. one extra log. Yeah, so the enemy before so we can make sure everybody has equipment. Um and yeah over the next little few weeks we definitely have to train that that pothouse segment. Right. Can't avoid it. So we've trained the backfield segment before we've trained the three crosses segment before, so now we're going to start to train the Paho segment and then put them all together. Yeah, because that is uh, the hardest part mm -hmm. of the course to course, guys. So once you can get through that part, then you're going to probably have, you can, if you can get through that part, even though it's only the first, probably eighth right. of the race. The rest is easy. The rest, rest is, is just easy. a mental thing of getting down the road, making sure you've got good footwear so you don't get any blisters, <clears throat> making sure that you're wearing comfortable clothing, maybe even wear a change of a shirt or something. Um, but good socks and good shoes are prime for something like your best friends. And just don't wear new, don't come up with any new shoes that day. Got to break them in before. You have to break them in, make sure they're comfortable. They should feel almost like a second skin for you that you don't even realize they're there. But not too old neither because then you can shoot it on. Right, right. Um, <clears throat> or you thought of the sim last week? I mean, I, I wrote the sim to last an hour in my mind I was like this should last about an hour and the first people who came, come in came in in like exactly like one hour and seconds points right. and seconds and everybody just looked really good I mean normally at this time of year we don't see people in this good shape right, right, right. you know there's always people like yourself who are always running there might be some people who are cycling or doing some other sport but when people come out at this time of year usually for the first set of outdoor workouts yeah some people struggle. And you know, they all usually run themselves into fitness, but there are a lot of people who are already in shape. Right. There are a lot of people who, I guess from bar fit, they kept that fitness and kept working out. So I think that this year is going to be a very competitive year for bar. I think that even if these people are in better shape, but they never win, they're definitely going to have more fun on the course. They're going to enjoy it more. They'll make the obstacles that are a little more technical easier to do because they will be getting there as gas. So yeah. I'm, I'm actually, like, I really enjoyed Saturday seeing everybody come out for sure. I, I wonder if they're in um, bar bar training or these people just want to go for crop over. Because, they, they, as you said, like, when they saw what was going on on Saturday last week, I was like, wait, wait, wait. Uh -huh. These people are training for bar, right? These people are, these, is this crop over bodies that I see here right now because right. like, people are definitely <clears throat> fitter mm -hmm. no in mm -hmm. mayor than I've ever seen us confirm. I think maybe Barfit had a little bit to do with it as well. Mm -hmm. I think Barfit gave some people something to train for. Right. And they're like, well, I ain't like this fitness goal. I can keep going, I can keep training because I got, you know, coast to coast coming up. And then once coast to coast finishes, then they'll start looking to train again or continue training, I should say, for, for the 24-hour uh, race. Don't forget, <clears> guys, <throat> if you have a name suggestion for the 24-hour race, please drop it down below in the comment section put it on the bar page i'll put it in the youtube comments 
Stock George and M. No, you're suggesting he may get a price. Yeah. I never know. But yeah, we're looking for a name, a nice catchy bar name for the uh, 24 hour race. And, and um, oh, I'm, I'm, this is going to be a stock press now. So a few guys have approached me and said, we want to do coast to coast, but we can't find nobody. Right? right. And they, they have a group of four guys or, or whatever, and they really want to do it. So I've decided that I'm going to have a few of those teams in, but they're not going to be eligible for prices. Right. Right. So if you've got four guys, you can't find any women, you can still register. You'll get your T-shirt. You'll get all the support. All the way down there and you can have you know you can have the experience mm. but you won't be eligible for a price kind of the same thing as the bar fit it, uh, it, a bar fit was a minimum of two women on the team correct so so yeah so if you're out there and you're, you're getting frustrated trying to find a couple of women to, to round up your team don't worry about it get to your pals from wherever get your entries in because we do have limited spaces in this event as well you know i actually remember to cut that part that i used that put that on the on the page itself, so that you can press put all the stop press for the right, right, right. And so yeah. everybody can know that we want people to get the full experience. I just say I'm not going to get the full experience with four men, but you're going right. to get the experience of walking from Bath to Boyard. Correct, and, and, and I, I, I we, we know that with some of the the athletes we have in bar, then four men team is so horrible. <laughs> in some cases, from some of the better mixed teams. Uh, yeah, for sure. So, but the most important thing to me. If you're going to do it, you, you, you've had early out notice, um, train for it. Yeah, we still have six weeks. We still, still have six, six weeks. So um, do some hills, do some. I don't think you've got to do like a whole bunch of running, right? Because um, you're not going to do any running on the day. No, you may be like, if you know, there might be some short flat sections where you could run 500 meters with a log, but nobody's going to be doing a whole lot of running. Right. So training some hills, just get some miles in your legs. In your legs yeah. And um, yeah, come on, enjoy yourself for sure. And when we get to that, as you, as you get closer to the day, but on the day, fuel on the day, this is from my last year's experience, is important. You need to be able to put something in your body and that, that's get that boost. So now let's come out mm -hmm. uh, for breakfast and tell you that you're going to make it. Probably outside to take a long way to eat. We have got uh, sponsors that are providing nutrients as well. On the, yeah, on for, the for, some, for an event that long, indeed, you need fuel replacement in the form of some sort of energy drink replacement type glucose replacement type thing you need electrolyte replacement uh, and you do need protein as as the event gets longer your body starts to break down muscle tissue mm. um, so you need to replace the protein as well so i'll, I'll have some bananas there we'll have some uh, we're still talking with nature valley about energy bars but we have pedialyte on board uh, obviously we have pure water on board uh, and then we have medical as well to make sure that nobody gets into trouble along the way. Right, right, right. So you'll be able to, but yeah, remember on the day, no, don't get to on the day yet. Come and train. Do this Saturday morning training. It's only Saturday mornings for the uh, course to course training right now. You're going to probably have to add another block soon. Um, right now, I'm just doing Saturday mornings because we have the bar fit classes that are still running. At oh, those are still running? Yeah. So we, we're going to, you know, gradually phase them out into the bar outdoor training when we start to improve the skills. Mm -hmm. But they were so popular. They were really only intended to, to be like a three month thing mm -hmm. up until till um bar fit. Yeah. But people That's very surprising. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But people were enjoying them and we just kept them on the time table and people are still coming. They're still getting pretty big. Mm -hmm. Um the evening classes and the last time. So when classes, I do one of those bar fit classes. She's uh, when I ask me a question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have um, one at six o'clock on Monday evening, six thirty uh -huh. Monday evenings. There's one at five thirty Monday Monday morning and Wednesday morning. Um, there's a lunchtime class on Wednesdays. So you teach that? Uh, no, uh, mostly the ones at the gym are taught by uh, Coach Monica, oh, okay. Jason, uh, Amina, and I think Rianne teaches the one on Monday morning. So we have oh, yeah. all the all the level two World Obstacle Certified coaches teaching those classes. Oh, nice, nice, nice. I did not realize that. It, and this is something that y'all that listening can get involved in as well. Because you see, they've got a lot of different things, even if you've got a lunchtime yeah, class. Yeah, you can do a morning class, you can do an evening class, or you can do a lunchtime class. All right. Mm -hmm. I relate that there a lot, man. So yeah, get involved in that as well. So, but the, and the Saturday morning is, is dedicated to the course to course training. Yeah, that's going to be very specific. <clears throat> it's going to be on the course with the carries, and we're going to be training sections of it. We're going to be putting things together, and we're going to be making it feel harder than the actual race will feel for you. Mm -hmm. So that once you get there on the twenty sixth, you're like, nah, it's cake. I do this all the time. Usually, I do this after doing fifty burpees. Right. You know, and so it should feel easy. And like I said, the, the main section that you have to train. The section that could break you mentally is that section from Bath Beach to the top of the house. The Bath Beach is in John Cemetery. Correct, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
Once you get to the cemetery and you, you're still living, right. you know you're good to go there. Exactly. It's mostly downhill from there. Yeah. Uh, that sounds good, though. Um, anything else you need the people to know about before this? Register for Coast to Coast, for sure. Register for Coast to Coast. Go to BarbadosAdventureRace.org. Um, follow the Instagram page. You know, we can have a little break from, from the Instagram page after bar. But, you know, we tend to post pretty regularly and we get yeah. most content from, from the Saturdays and some of these bar fit classes as well. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep putting. We had a social media contest this week. Um, so go ahead. And I'm probably going to put that up on the YouTube page again as well, just okay. to see if we can get. We want to grow this page, people. So share it with your friends, share it with your families, like, subscribe, you know, comment. And that's not who you would like to see mm -hmm. on the podcast. That's not who you would like to hear us have an interview with. Correct. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we get um, somebody else next week and we have a good conversation with them as well. Don't forget, though, we want to film coast to coast mm -hmm. and we want to get that package out. Which means we also get the package out from the original bar last year. We're going to get out something very shortly, right? Yes, and in fact, we had Bell Holder <clears throat> booked for this show, but we had so many things to talk about that we yeah. had to kind of push her back as a guest. Yeah. So we're going to get her back on pretty soon. She'll talk about everything that went into filming that program, and that'll be out very, very soon as well. Yeah, just in time for course, of course. Hopefully. All right, guys, I think that's it. Yes, sir. That's it for me. And from me, we didn't even introduce ourselves at the start of the show. Yeah, well, I'm yeah. Saul. Yeah, and I'm George. <laughs> yeah, this is the Barcast Podcast. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you got here all the way all down to the end, George is going to give you something. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, message George. <laughs> message George. Ask George, where's my price? Right, right, right. And it's probably going to be a one free 5K. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'll mark the course for you. <laughs> all right, guys. On to the next Barcast podcast, though, I want to thank you all so much for continuing to watch the Barcast and staying true to Bar. And don't forget, never, ever, ever stop talking about Bar. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity, and performance, the next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water.